This video series will be a mind-blowing adventure on artificial intelligence writing music that mimics a human musician. Is what I would say in a perfect universe where that existed. What it is going to be is an honest look at generative music, pre-existing software that assists in music writing, and deep learning, all of which are complex instructions that humans give to machines to make music that sounds similar to what a human would write in the first place. One way or another, every one of these techniques requires knowledge, skill, or just plain hard work. So there's only one magic button that allows you to enjoy the spoils of being a songwriter without actually having to write a melody yourself. And it's called sampling. In this first segment, we're gonna be talking about generative music. That is creating music out of random values. Although creating music out of random values, as you will soon find out, is impossible. And so what we're really doing, to be more honest, is trying to get as close to random as possible. Another way of looking at it is that this video is sort of a prerequisite or an under the hood look at how machines can make music. I'm gonna be starting right at the beginning. So some of you may already know this stuff. And if you're watching me explain something to you that you already know, feel free to skip ahead to the demonstrations. So first of all, in order to understand how generative music works, we have to understand how a basic or even a modern computer works. And by computer, I mean anything that you plug into the wall or put a battery into. One can argue, but an analog synthesizer isn't a computer. Well, let's take something like the TB303. It is very analog, but you create a sequence on it and you recall data when you turn it on after you turn it off. It's a computer. In the 1930s, Alan Turing designed what he called the we gotta go further back than that. In the mid 1800s, George Boole hypothesized what is now referred to as Boolean algebra, which is the basis for mathematical logic in all computers. In normal or elementary algebra, the kind you're used to, all of the values of variables are numbers. You can add and multiply the values together and those are your prime operations. In Boolean algebra, instead of numbers, the values of your variables are true or false and your operations are things like and, or, or not. So Boolean algebra is what generally allows circuits to work. And for a century, many major cities had stoplights and they used Boolean logic to operate. If light A on 18th Street is green or true, and if light B on 31st Street is red or false, then that combination will send a signal to light C on Halstead Avenue to turn true or green. Now there are seven different basic logic functions, and I don't need to get into them right now in the video, but entangle all of the lights in a major city using this system and you understand how incredibly complicated it gets. Fast forward to the 1930s, Alan Turing brilliantly designs what he called the universal machine, which is now generally referred to as the Turing machine. The Turing machine wasn't an actual thing, but rather a metaphor or hypothetical thought experiment that allows us to easily understand how computational algorithms exist. To attempt to explain how a Turing machine works, I'm going to order a pizza using nothing but three true or false values. The pizza parlor has a Turing machine that will translate these values into a pizza order. So by sending just one true value or just three bits, I've communicated that I want a small sausage pizza in which I will pick up. This is precisely how every computer or digital device that you've ever used works, except in a modern computer, it's happening astoundingly fast, uh, hundreds of billions of times per second. Some of you may now be asking, okay, so if this is how all computers work, then why the hell are we only using zeros and ones? Why are we not using, for example, a quinary system that has five different values? Wouldn't that make it exponentially faster and more efficient to the power of five? It would, it absolutely would. 
but there's a big problem. It would lack precision. If you were using voltage that was more complex than true or false at its basic level, then even if you had a highly regulated voltage giving these initial values, every time somebody turned your microwave on or every single time a solar flare hit the earth, your motherboard would fry. That's why your Wi-Fi signal or your cell phone signal goes out because they're not using true or false signals. So until quantum computing becomes a thing, zeros and ones are the way to go. Stay with me, I promise this is relevant. Why am I giving you a crappy lecture on computer science 101 when you wanna learn about generative music? Well, it's because nothing that a computer or a circuit or a digital device can do is truly generative. Nothing in computing as we know it can be random because all computers and circuits are deterministic. To make a random number generator, you need a pre-made deterministic formula or recipe, which is not a thing. We've made formulas that generate random formulas, that generate random formulas, that generate random formulas. That generate random formulas, that generate random formulas, that generate a random number. But it's still based on that initial deterministic recipe or formula or a decryption key, as you might call it. But this is about music, and we're not going to try and fool hackers. We're just trying to fool ourselves. Even then, random sound sounds like this. So we need our human brains to guide it. For something to sound good, it has to be very, very deterministic. When you think about what we're doing in this segment or video of the series, you realize that it is not at all a shortcut to have a computer write music for you. It's a labor of love. The truth is, by making generative music, we're just modifying something that's not random to begin with to make it sound more like something that we would write. So why bother? Well, it's fun and it's actually pretty damn inspiring. Here's some good news. A fully analog device in, for example, a modular synthesizer is not restricted to any deterministic value whatsoever. If the temperature goes up by one degree in my room, then the tuning on an analog oscillator will go up by, I don't know, it's always different. So we have the perfect random value to start our project. And I even have a few Boolean logic gate modules to help us create an algorithm that will make a not at all random song, but it will be somewhat generative and hopefully it'll sound good. Hey there, I have never in my life had a microphone of this type, of this headset type that sounded good. And if anybody knows of one that sounds good, I mean, I have this running through tons of post compressors and EQs and gates and crap like that. And if anybody has ever had a microphone like this, a headset microphone that actually sounds good, like, you know, a condenser or anything else that you hear in this channel, please let me know. Until then, there might be some annoying shh and s. Ugh. So let's talk about random right off the bat. I'm gonna use a West Coast random source 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to output an oscillator, a little sign right here. I warned you about this in one of my previous modular videos about how annoying some modular videos sound because of this very thing. To describe to you what's happening, you just have to hear the tone itself. So here we go. That's pretty awful, but that is random. It's a fluctuating random voltage. Hooray. And then we could put noise directly into the pitch of this sine wave. White noise, blue noise. Okay, we all know what noise sounds like, so we don't need to actually go any further than that. Hopefully you can see everything. It's kind of hard to get camera angles on all of this stuff at once, and hopefully that's not too confusing, and hopefully I don't move too fast or too slow or make too many sounds like that. So what I'm going to do first of all is my Kilpatrick audio, I'm just going to go gate out into the input of my Lifeform semi-modular. So let's hear that. Okay, so that's our bass beat. It's just a clock. Tick, 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 tick. Okay. The clock out is going to go into a malt. The malt isn't multiplying anything. What it's doing is it's it should be called the dupe because it's duplicating the signal. I'm going to duplicate it. Let's duplicate it back into here. Show you how that works. And now I'm going to also duplicate it into a clock divider and multiplier. So how the clock divider and multiplier works, get another cable, goes into the gate. All right, so divided by two, divided by three, divided by four, and so on, and then times two, times four, times six. Okay, so now you get an idea of how that's working. What if I used this logic module, which has AND, OR, and XOR? I'm going to put up on the screen how AND, OR, and XOR works, and that also has two inverters. So that means it'll be the inversion of whatever you want to put there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go, just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to go out of divided by 2 into one of the logic inputs. I'm going to go divided by 3 into another one of the logic inputs. And AND should only light up when 2 and 3 match, which means 2 times 3 equals 6, right? So this and AND should be lighting up at the same time. There we go. So we've divided our third by 2 using Boolean algebra right here, live. Um, grab another little cable here. Just to amplify the signal, I'm putting it through here. This isn't actually an ADAR right now. It's just sort of buffering my signal and should have every six. Okay, so if we wanted to go really crazy, we could also divide it by five. Now, we're really not going to hear it very often. Now, here's where things get a little wonky, because it would be pretty difficult to figure out in elementary algebra when a second, a third, and a fifth are all combined. But we're hearing it right now. To make this a little more exciting sounding, I am using a multiplication of the clock by 3, and then a division by 2 and 3. And this is the AND of those three signals. So it is getting kind of kind of random and goofy. Okay, so we hear this, but now we want some music. So I'm going to take this fluctuating random voltage and pop it into my VO. That sounds pretty terrible, doesn't it? But there is something we can do. We can use a sample and hold, which is something that most electronic musicians are familiar with in one way or another, but this is its true form. 
we're going to use sample. This is our random signal. This random signal, I have like five sample and holds here. I don't know which one to use. Let's just use this one. Okay. There's our input. Now, I'm going to duplicate this AND signal. So I'm going to take it uh, into another buffered malt, or dupe as it should be called. Okay, and the output is going to go into the trigger of the sample and hold. So now, every single time that the sample and hold gets a gate, it is stopping and freezing what's happening coming out of this random uh, voltage generator. So the output of this guy can now go into the VO. Okay, now, some of these notes are a little bit higher than I want them to be. I don't want them to be that high. So, I'm going to take the voltage out of the sample and hold. I'm going to pop it into my maths, and I'm going to use... Actually, you know what? For, for an easier sake, I'm going to pop it directly into a VCA. The maths would work the same, but maths could be used for something way cooler than that. Now, I'm going to output it here. There we go. So this is just an amplifier. Or I guess it's limiting the amplification of that incoming signal, so it's not too high. But this is not musical, so what we need to do is quantize the notes into a scale. And I have a bunch of quantizers to select from, so I'm just going to use this U scale as my quantizer. And so <laughs> what we will do now is the VO input, I'm going to take that out, I'm going to put it into the quantizer. The output of the quantizer <laughs> makes it sound very, like, suspenseful. The output of the quantizer is going into the input of the VO. And everything is just the C on the quantizer, which may or may not be a C, probably not, because that is out of tune. So I'm just going to turn it into a major scale. So C, E, and G. Go minor. All right, let's go minor seventh. Keep things happy. Let's go major seventh. How about major ninth? Lovely. Okay, so what I want to do now is I want to add a, another part to this melody, or I want this to be the counterpoint to an overall bass note of some sort. So this part is a bit painful, but I'm going to have to listen to the root note here. Let me turn this up. Got to tune it. No way around it. So I'm also going to unplug this just so I can tune these together. You know, a more efficient way of doing this would be to take the voltage output of the quantizer, put it through another dupe, I'm just going to, I'm going to call it that for the rest of my life. Nobody's ever going to know what I'm talking about, but. All right. All right. That's better. Okay, so now we're all tuned up. 
Okay, so now I want this module to be something a little bit slower, more relaxed. So I'm going to patch uh, the division, the, the fourth division of the original clock and the fifth division of the original clock into a logic gate. And then that logic gate is going to pop out a multiplication of those two, and it's going to be very seldom when you hear it. I'm going to put that into a buffered malt. Or, damn it, I keep saying it, a, a buffered dupe. I'm going to put that into a buffered dupe, and I'm going to have that signal duplicated a couple times because I'm probably going to have to make an envelope for this. All right. We're going to leave this quantizer entirely, and we're going to use this quantizer instead. If I remember how. I just got this. Yeah, okay. So what I'm doing is I'm setting up a scale for this. So now we have two different scales, which is going to be helpful in making this sound a little bit nicer. All right, so next up, this guy is going to have to go through a VCA. Or a filter. Let's put through a filter. Filter output will go into clouds that I'm just using as a hub to go in and out. Okay, this can go into an envelope, which we will say can be the maths. The maths first output, which is right here. Okay, I'm just going to have this nice and short for now. And where's my filter? Man, this and signal ain't coming very often, is it? All right, I'm gonna have to do it. I'm just for now. I'm gonna have to make this a little bit more rapid. So right now, just to get an idea of what I'm doing, I'm just using the clock output to control this envelope here. Okay, so we're doing the exact same thing again. I'm running another random voltage into a sample and hold. It's funny because this thing has a bunch of samples and holds, but just this one's just a little simpler for the use of explanation. So random going in as my sample. My hold will be the original uh, clock. And then the output will go into my quantizer, my second quantizer. Okay, so now, annoyingly, I want to bring this down an octave. Let's see if I could do that without having to pull everything out. So as promised now, instead of just the normal clock, the divided by 4 and divided by 5 and signal will trigger um, the chords oscillator. That could sound way less obnoxious.
This chords, this chord module sometimes does a good job, sometimes it doesn't. Let's see how it does. change this to be a bit faster because this is not really going anywhere fast. And of course, as you would expect, all of these things can be randomized too. So what we heard here wasn't the most amazing piece of music ever created, but it was a good idea of all that goes into making something generative. It might just be like a bum cable or something, but somewhere in here, this quantizer is sending kind of a dirty signal to the braids of what note to play. And the braids is then getting confused and it kind of just sounds aggressive, like it doesn't want to be part of the overall song. And I love it. I really liked it for some reason. To give you a rundown of some of these other modules I have, I have Maths, okay? Maths is extraordinarily powerful for generative stuff, but there are amazing Maths tutorials on YouTube about the advanced features that you could do with it, and me just repeating those tutorials is pointless. You could just watch those. Um, if you just search Math Tutorials, you'll find a whole bunch. This is this module is called Ornament and Crime, and this one is incredible for generative sequences, for crazy quantizing. Um, this is another quantizer. It's the Quantimator. Um, Quantimator, you can shift between... Basically, all of these stand for a scale, and you need a damn manual next to it at all times for using it, but all these mean a scale, and you can shift between the scales via CV. So you can even change scales randomly, which is probably not going to sound that melodic overall and make, you know, a wonderful serenade, but it is going to uh, change up your options a little bit more. I also have an A152 address TNH switch, which is a great module or generative patches. However, it is also a complicated and extremely powerful module, and it deserves its own video. And so I don't even want to touch it in this video because I don't want to overcomplicate this mess that's already happening for any viewers who aren't that familiar with modular stuff. So this is kind of the general base of creating generative music with a modular. And it is 
very simple, but at the same time, it gets very complicated very quickly. And if I were to spend an hour or two patching around making a generative patch, you wouldn't even be able to see the modules. There'd be so many cables. And it's very, very difficult to follow. It's something that I definitely have done in live streams, and it's something that I definitely want to do more of in live streams in the future. So moving on, I have one more thing to show you, and it's really cool very different way of making a random sequence on a modular and it's essentially using a computer and that computer is an Arduino in the Ardcore module. There is a module called the Turing machine and it is nothing like the Turing machine I mentioned in the monologue but it is still a very very cool module and it's sort of a random sequence generator and there is code for the Ardcore that kind of emulates it and I've sort of messed with the code for that to make my own uh, pseudo Turing machine that's not really a Turing machine. What it is, it's a random sequence generator. And how it works is we have this coming out right now. For example, let me just one channel here. Okay, so it's just a loop. And this loop is completely random. However, if I move a if I move this knob up, it increases the chances of a random sequence slipping in. Okay, and so now we have this sequence again. This is what we're this is what we're looping, and I'm gonna turn this knob up and this increases the length of the sequence. Okay, so we have that. Now I'm gonna put in a little bit of random every now and then. This changes the range. If I really want to go high or low. And then this is the scale that it's being quantized in. So I'm going to create a completely new random. Okay, now let's load up this channel and harmonize it. I could tune this a bit better. So what we're hearing is a little bit more human sounding because it's looping and every now and then it changes. There are almost unlimited ways to make generative music on a modular synthesizer. And what we did today is we looked at a very few of them. So we understand the core of how generative music is made. And in the next video, I'm going to be looking at different types of software. And some of it will get extraordinarily more complicated, but you still understand how the core of generative music works. And therefore, it will be easier to understand what's going on with that software. We're obviously not going to have the source code of that software and be looking through how it works, but we will have a much better idea of how it works. If you enjoyed this video and if you learned anything, subscribe to my channel. And if there's anything you want me to cover in the future, let me know in the comments. Thank you and bye.